Hey YouTube, I hope you can't hear that fan going. Uh, so yeah, sorry about that big long video. I couldn't be bothered editing when I was away getting the new Ibanez Roadster. But ba, ba here's the new Ibanez Roadster. Um, it was actually in pretty good condition. Uh, just really dirty. Um, I said in the video earlier on, it's like I think I reckon it must have been sitting in the guy's house for the last twenty years. It, it did it its own stand. It came with a free stand that matched it. And I think it just sat there as an ornament. Um, I think it had been dusted, but I don't, you know, it was just, it just needed a little bit of work. So here it is, um, and it was wrong. It's not an RS140, it's an RG140. So here you go, another, another, because it's 1986, that's when the RS, as in Roadstar, became RG, Roadster Guitar. Um, so another 1986 RG, along with my 530. Um, this is the... The baby, the baby of the range, I guess. So it's not quite strat. They've kind of sleeked it a bit. Something about it to me kind of looks a bit going in the fender lead direction somewhere. Um, it's still full scale and stuff, but the body's been chopped out a bit. It's got a power rocker bridge. I wrote it. I, I put it on the. I'm to go over. I looked up the page. You can look this up in the 1986 catalog. There appears to be two 1986 catalogs though on the Ibanez page because. This is not the one that I saw before, and I'm sure it was the same. It was still on the Ab Ibanez website, and it was like it was the same catalogue, but maybe it was a UK one or a something. I don't know. So it's still the same guitar, isn't it? So the neck on it, very similar to this one, um, dimensionally everything. So this is my my baby. Um, obviously a bit higher up in the range. There's not really that many ranges. I think there's only I think there's there's the 100, the 400, and the 500 series at at, at, at this stage. So it's like you think, oh, an RG, an RG 100 and something, 140, this one, I've still got the sticker on the back that tells you. RG 140, I think a 140, oh, I think you'll find it there. Like that, um, that lovely sparkly Ibanez I was playing the other day was a 300 and something. And you're like, all right, okay. So a 100 must be really cheap and nasty. But the thing is, a really cheap and nasty guitar from Fuji Gen, Japan, the 1986 is not a really cheap and nasty guitar. It's a more basic one. So obviously, that's got the fancy top binding Floyd Rose stuff on it. This doesn't have very much on it, but what it does have... So this is a, a Super 70 pickup, which is what Van Halen used. These are Super something. Sevens or something they're called. I can't remember. I've actually got one of these in my Fender 6 Telebass that I was playing the other day. Um... Which I was told at the time was from an Ibanez. I just I just liked the look of it. In fact, no, actually, what I wanted was when I put them in that base. I just wanted one that see how these are just um, cylindrical and they don't have the bit that kind of goes in this shape. Do I have one sitting there? I do not. Yeah, it's because I didn't want you know it's when, like, they're not normally the, 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 normally the routing kind of goes to a sort of Superman shield shape to take in the bits where the terminals go on it. Well, I, I, because I was routing it straight into the body, I wanted one that was so that was why I bought it originally. Um, yeah, so that this power rocker bridge is not set up right. It sank overnight. Okay, so it, I still need to do some work on this. I was up till one o'clock in the morning last night. Just I could have just put strings on it. The strings on it were ten years old, but it was like just fingerboard and frets. And basically, just a, and I gave it a proper deep clean. You know, tuners off, everything to bits, cleans, put back together again, just to make it good. Although it still does need. A few days worth of fettling to make it perfect. So, I've got the same uh, the Gota smooth tuner tuners, Super Seventy. These pickups, this Power Rocker bridge is like see this. Um, it doesn't have bridge posts. As you can see, this this metal because I've polished up, you can't see it. This is like a metal. Um, how would you call it? Like a holder. It's kind of like if you imagine it just being like a a piece of metal with a slot in it. Well, the actual bridge plate fits in the slot. So it doesn't pivot on two points, it pivots on a blade running all the way along inside here. So we'll see how that does over time. I was very conscious of making sure that it had all the saddles and stuff on it. This um, tremolo arm fits it amazingly, it's just that the angle's a bit off. So I'm going to go over to Scott's and I'm pretty sure he had some of these. So he might have one that fits better, or if it can't fit better, it's absolutely perfect. It's totally, you can trill on it almost. It's, it's absolutely solid, but um, it's just the angle's not quite right. And the thing that annoys me is it's like when you look at it there, the actual post that it goes into seems to be angled like that. That's why it's like that. You know, 
So I wonder if I, I might be able to go in and adjust the post so the post sits more vertical rather than just bending this with a, a hammer, <laughs> like I normally do. Um, it's also got the, the like my least favourite feature of this, which I, I can't talk about that guitar without complaining about the push-push pots, which you can't tell whether they're on or off. This has got one as well, the same, the same pot. So, and my thinking was, I bet somebody somewhere would absolutely love to have an original Ibanez 1986 pot, the same one, the same pot that's in the top of the range guitars, um, just to make it original, and I can just sell the bastard and use the money to buy a normal push-pull one, one where you can just pull it up and you know it's coil split. So that's obviously a coil split for the bridge pickup. So, playing through the new oranges, is actually the first time I've played it through anything. I made sure it worked last night, playing it quiet volume at one in the morning, but you know, I don't want to take the piss and play the guitar. Right. That's, a, that's a neck pickup, out of the way. But the, the quality level of this is just eons above what modern guitars are. And I'll keep, keep broken record, that's just me complaining about it all the time. And then also there are things like it's got like a single ply pick guard, which isn't really, it doesn't have enough screws in it. It's like it's got one there, one there, I don't know. It wants a screw there because it's kind of, I feel it's a bit flimsy. I think these are this, it's this sort of range of guitars. I don't know if I've ever seen this exact one, but I've definitely seen there's a, a couple of basses that are kind of like this that basically snap because it's got the, the output jacks on the front, which I like by the way, but because it's on a sort of thin cheap bit of plastic, if you stand in that, it's just going to snap the scratch plate. Um, so quite a lot of times these are homemade scratch plates on them and stuff because they just snap. This one's got the original one on it, so... That's position, next position, position. Really missing not having reverb when I'm showing off stratty sounds. Any recommendations on a reverb pedal? One that's um, not expensive and doesn't have an awful lot of options on it. Basically just having like like a TH one or something like that. Just it's just gonna sit on the top of the amp and the flex loop and be the, the reverb. I don't need four hundred different types of reverb. What was it? Um one of Scott's pals had a is it a Strimian? The like a three hundred pound. I don't know if it was was it reverb or was it delay or something? This thing was like a synthesizer. I mean it was sounded fantastic and immediately as soon as he started playing about with it, fiddling with the knobs, he got I can totally see why those are three hundred quid. Totally. I don't want that though. I just want one that's just got like reverb on, off, and a, how much do you want? That kind of, all I need to. for nines in this da oh, da Ugh, I was gonna troll Scott, I forgot. My pal Ian was over last night taking that he sent back that uh, Fender six. You get I was gonna hit Scott with a go what are these are these nines or tens because he always complains. He likes buying um hybrid sets which are like nines for the thin strings and tens for the top strings. So I was gonna put the nine and a half on and go like so what and so when he picked up he's like up here oh and he wouldn't, normally he just goes like, what do you put tens on it for? Oh, what do you put nines on it for? So this time it would be like, ah, nine and a half, get it right up here, so I'll need to sneakily put that in later. Um, <laughs> but I do kind of agree with him, which is a bit more annoying thing, because he's right. It wouldn't be annoying if he was, if he was wrong. <laughs> I did have a wee bit of cowboy chord damage, um, so I kind of sorted that out, basically just levelled and dressed the fret. Still plenty of life left in them. Um, it just really just goes through that this was, in its day, a beginner guitar. Um, I just, I got the, before before they realised they'd go up here, oh no, we've got to build quality instruments, because if we build a really good basic guitar, it means that once someone's played for a couple of years, they'll buy another Ibanez because it's amazing and it's up here. No, 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 no. You sell a guitar that looks good in a photo or on the internet that's absolutely shite. Who cares if they buy anything in the future? That's that's how how you do it. You know, it's like it's got to look good and make sure there's lots of 
paid reviews on YouTube and stuff saying it's pure amazing by Harley Benton. Oh, pure amazing. And it's like, or you could just actually produce a really good guitar that's it's cheap because it's quite basic. Um, well, it's not that basic. But you know, you can, obviously it's cheaper to not put binding on it. It's cheaper to, I don't know. But I mean, I, I think, I think to be honest, I think the thing that's selling this to me is the, the body coloured headstocks are the thing, really. Um, that's my, my new thing is, yes, painting the headstock the same colour as the body. Definitely a good call. <laughs> There's my my, my favourite joy of that guitar there, but it's like is it single coil? Don't know. Can't look at it because it just bounces back up and sits in the same place. Give me a push pull pot where I can look at it and go, oh, we're in cost, but we're so single coil on the bridge. Humbucker on the bridge. Other way around, this is a single coil. I'll probably bring that up a little bit as well. Addition two. Yeah, so I'm in a bit of a rush today. I'm trying to do as many videos as I can. I'm going to go on another epic quest. I'm going to. It's a bit quiet, isn't it? I get the impression it's probably. A bad connection somewhere rather than actually some sort of switch so I can put in a clean track build a foot switch so I can have like clean and then running through I don't know this amp or something so I've got all these amps sitting there anyway so you know put the loop in da, 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 clean and then I can solo over the top of it with um in fact it's not actually that difficult to do is it that difficult to do it might be uh, um, so dirty I 
do need to have a wee bit more of adjustment on this. It's um, is the action high? Slightly high because it's moved. It seems to have settled overnight. Um, the action in a lot, but it's just a wee bit high. So, this will just be the first one of these videos. Um, just try to put something so I'm not just putting out all these videos of me out in the car, which is kind of annoying. Plus, I've got hundreds of download videos I'm going to sneak out. I've been doing that over the last couple of days, just sticking shit out. Um, there's one that's going to be like uh, how to get a kebab at download, which is basically me with a GoPro in my head because I, I was drunk and kind of forgot it was there. I think it's about 40 minutes long of basically walking from the front of the main stage to the gangster kebab shop. Um, which would be good for if you're, I don't know, an insomniac or like, I don't know, full of acid or something like that. It might be quite in entertaining. Yeah. So the, another interesting thing about this as well is that see quite a lot of the guitars, especially my Schecter bass, there's a way of cutting the wood for the neck, which gives you like smiley faces. Like it kind of looks like a totem pole. Sounds like I'm tripping, but I'm not. Um, down the edge of the neck, which I've had, quite a few guitars I've had, I've been really good ones, I've had that. This has got it. So I don't know whether, maybe it's just a complete fluke, or it's, I don't know. I mean, it does have, it's got a bit of a dent there, which is annoying and unignorable because it's right there. Um, and it's got a couple of chips on the outside, but ultimately, ultimately it's a pretty good neck. And, it, you know, it doesn't have the diamonds, which I was annoyed about. Annoyingly, it had the centre bit, these, see these things, which are, they're not great things, um, but they do look cool. And uh, I remember looking them up and it's like 50 quid or something for them. <laughs> yeah, right. They don't, they don't look that cool. I, d I believe I actually did try and make them at one point, but um, for some reason I haven't put them on a guitar, so I'll maybe have a wee look and see if I can make them out of that aluminium stuff, you know. <laughs> Overall, the fingerboard it's squeaky. Like not 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 the strings, but it's kind of. I meant to go back over it, or rather, it's just drank all oil because it was really dirty. It just it seemed to fit. There's some there's something slightly odd feeling about it. Um, was it because I used tea cut in the body a little bit? I couldn't find the proper uh, polish. So I just used tea cut because it was it was manky. Well, it, it didn't look that dirty up close. It's like oh, it was pretty good. And then it's like, you know, it's like you look at it, you hold it up to the light and go, oh, geez, it's like pure matte. Whereas now it's shiny and I think it's looking fantastic. And the difference it made just cleaning up all that stuff, I think it doesn't look that clean there, but it is. It's now spankling clean. I would, you know, touch my face with it, it'd be fine. Um, yeah. So, RG um, is what it is. Um, I kind of, I was kind of, as you saw in the, the video, which you probably might have seen this afternoon, um, yeah, I get the last of the Roadster, the last of the Road RSs and the first of the RGs, because that's the first of the RGs. It's like, no, I all, I always say that that was the first RG, which, well, they were both made in 1986. So was is this the first RG? They both are, you know. Um, shape-wise, actually, shape-wise, is it actually quite similar to that one? No, not really. Um... I believe, and I need to compare this to Scott's black one, which I think might even be the same model, well, an RS. It's a little bit more stratty. This is just a little bit more... <laughs> you look at it, but it just says... Oh, we just, how have we got in 20 minutes? Oh, okay, I'll just do it now. The Roadster Standard Series takes on a new look for 1986. For more comfort, both on stage and during long playing sessions. Um... The body has been downsized and contour cuts added to the top and back edges. Oh, good point, actually. Scott's one's just like a slap body, like a telly. This does have the strap contours on it. Okay. Um, the lighter weight eliminates fatigue and allows greater freedom of motion. Rosewood fingerboards with a flatter radius. It's a 12-inch on this one. Make tricky fingering easy and playing action quicker. Power rocker tremolo system is time-proven and reliable. Featured in all Roadster standard, except the RG200 non-tremolo. 
Nearly frictionless pivot points assure precise return to pitch, even after heavy use. Drop-in string loading and snap-in, snap-out arm attachment. Yeah. Doesn't screw in. It pops in. It's got like a... Kind of goes to the end of your guitar lead thing. You know, it's kind of, it kind of goes up and goes whoop, like that. And it goes whoop, plops in. And a uh, crazy string loading thing. It's like you put... It doesn't load from the back. You load it from the top. So you kind of put it in and then kind of put it to the back and it kind of goes under a wee hook thing like that. Um, which is fine once you, once I've, once I've spent five minutes trying to get the first string in and taking the back out and going what the fuck it's easy you just basically put it in and instead of hooking forward it hooks back right? it's kind of weird but it's fine uh, are accomplished without the need for tools I'm simplifying the use and maintenance of the Pro Rocker all popular pickup configurations are available in the RG standard line 110 single humbucker 120 two humbuckers are 135 three single cars and 140 hum hum HSS. I do looking at the um, the RG two hundred is the one that doesn't have a, a a trim on it. It actually has been added to the line to fill the need of an RG for it's been added to a, a non quality a quality non tremolo guitar, especially suited to c contemporary pop and new rock music. The RG two hundred is a bright ringing tone with distinct emphasis on the upper harmonics. Special features include traditional V-shaped neck. I like a V-shaped neck. I, I can't imagine what I one of these with a V-shaped necks on it. This is basically the same as that neck. It's just perfect strat neck, really. Um, and it's, it runs out again. It's like, I think... I, uh, I don't, uh, would I be tempted? Is this a strat? I know Jez would say, no, 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 it's got, it's got a humbucker on it, so it's not a strat. But it's like, it's not quite a strat, it's strat-y. I'll say I've got an Ibanez strat, would you turn, you turned up with this, would people go, oh, that's not a strat. That's, it's got, it, it's more a strat than anything else, but it's just getting a wee bit further away. I've got an argument there is, that's not really a strat. I, would, I know it's going to sound even worse as well. I don't really think that's a super strat. I mean, it is, but... In my, my own definition, I don't think it fits in as a super strat. I don't think I would fit this one in either as well, really, would I? Is it a super strat? Maybe it is. Probably because it's got a scratch. If it didn't have a scratch plate, maybe it'd be a super strat. What a load of twaddle. Rock on, catch you later. And sorry for all the tons of videos that I'll be kicking about over the next few days. I just keep going away for a week. Just there's so many things I've got to do. And um, there we go, there we go. So... I'm trying to find the cursor. It's floating about somewhere. Rock on!